So... The first thing I ever saw from Batman was Batman Begins. Like that was the first, my dad brought that DVD home and then we put it in and I watched it and I was absolutely terrified. I, I shut the thing off. I didn't think about Batman again. For the most part, I like just like, I wasn't like a big Batman fan, like in my very formative like years of like between four to six or whatever. Unlike everyone else, I actually haven't seen the Batman, like the entire show. I remember watching a few episodes as a kid and it did leave an impact on me, despite not having watched the entire thing. When I was a kid, I wasn't really much of a Batman guy. Um, he was cool, and I always liked his stories, and I dressed up as him whenever I wanted, you know, whenever, whenever I felt like I could. But um, I wasn't really, like, the, I didn't grow up with many cartoons, you know? I, I didn't have the animated series so much, that was a little before my time. And, and the, the most that I, I like... I mostly grew up with um, with the Brave and the Bold cartoon, which that was a very different Batman than I was used to. Well, I'd rewatch the DVD of the seasons nonstop, and as I would wait for the season to come out on DVD, I'd catch episodes here and there live on television. One that seemed to replay often on TV was the season premiere of season three, Batgirl Begins, which I watched nonstop. I'd record it and rewatch it uh, as a christmas present i think or maybe it was a birthday present i got the season three dvd uh and it was like one lime dvd and then one blue dvd and ever since then i would torture my parents i would bring that dvd thing everywhere um i brought it in car trips i brought it to india even like when we'd go on like summer trips even though like u.s discs don't work in india even i just like bring that dvd around with me everywhere as if like i treated it like an action figure because like that was the one thing like I was like, this, this thing, this is my thing now. But I always liked Batman when he was, um, when he was a little bit brighter, but not full on cartoony like Brave and the Bold or the Adam West stuff. But I didn't like, fuck. <laughs> um, but I didn't like when he was, uh, I don't know how to describe it. I didn't like when he was ultra dark either. And the, the animated series had a really good tone and it was always really good with it. But he was always a little bit more vengeful and dark in that. And I think a big reason why that I have that opinion about Batman is because I didn't really watch it growing up so much. It wasn't like something that I was able to consistently watch, but every once in a while I would just see a couple episodes of the Batman cartoon um, and of the the Batman show. And I, I, don't, I, I don't know, I think the tone of that stuck with me because the tone of that show was always very bright and young and energy filled while still having like a bit of darkness and a bit of edginess and a bit of like angst almost or a bit of you know that Batman classic what you'd expect from Batman's story. I've always been a skinny kid and to have a thin Batman who is sleek and agile and also he had a higher voice because he was younger so he wasn't I wouldn't say the scariest Batman but he was obviously the coolest. I also had this one um, box thing, like it came with a watch and a, a pair of binoculars. And like the pair of binoculars wasn't anything special. It was just like a blue shell with like black lens or whatever. And that's like the, like I don't have like any of my old toys, but I have that. And like, that's the one thing that like from like my past of kindergarten, like that I still like keep. And I don't, there's not like real, any like real reason that I keep it. I think it's just, like it's kind of it, it's like it gives me re remembrance of like those old times so it, it's like a nice dab i know i have it somewhere back in my house another favorite character was batgirl who i think was probably my first crush when i was seven or eight um she also was so cool and inspired by the batman and an acrobat just overall a well-written character the first episode uh, it was and I remember watching it, and bear in mind, I did not like Batman at all. I was I was watching the show, and I was just thinking, damn, what is this? Who is this guy I see before me? Just, I, I don't remember much about the planet now, but I think, like, Joker escaped Arkham, I think. 
And that was like my first of exposure to the Joker and it terrified me. It shook me to my core. And it genuinely scared me in a good way. Like in a good way that kids are supposed to be scared. I don't know. I want to say the first episode I ever watched of the show it was really late. It was, I was, I, like I said, I didn't grow up with it. I didn't really watch it continuously. But, um, I think the first episode I ever watched was, I don't even know if this is a real episode. I can't remember. <laughs> but, um, it was like Batman, Batgirl, and Robin were fighting Joker. And there was like some bank robberies involved. There was a train involved, I think. And I can't exactly remember. But the thing that really stuck out to me about that episode was like, Batman was doing stuff as Batman during the day. You know, he wasn't just some nighttime hero. He showed up and he helped as a regular daytime superhero. And like, that that's really rare for something for Batman. Um, unless if it's like a Justice League thing. And he showed up and he fought the Joker during the day on this train and with full view of civilians and stuff. And that just registered to me. It's like, oh yeah, Batman's not just some vigilante at night. Batman's not just some, some undercover of darkness gonna go beat up some thugs. He's a superhero. Harley Quinn, who who they gave a new origin to in this show, which was really interesting because usually she's a professional psychologist, but making her a TV show host was genius and added, uh, added to her insanity of her character, giving her a online PhD or an online degree in psychology. Uh, yeah, it was really an, Neat alternative take on Harley Quinn. I think I think the plot of the pilot episode is like Joker's like gonna do some shit with the Joker gas in um you know Central Gotham. And I remember I, I just remember Batman being on like a blimp, I think. And I don't know. It just felt it felt like there were stakes in a way that I don't really think I'd watched in a kid show before. I remember that one episode. Um... I think it was, I think it's called like a sidekick. No one ever talks about it, like ever. It's that one episode where, like, because Batman got a sidekick, Batgirl, Joker goes to a high school um, where Batgirl also goes to school randomly and finds like a class clown. Um, and like realizing now that's like, it's kind of an allegory for like grooming. Cause like he takes the kid, he like shows him how funny he is. He takes him in. And he's like, I'm going to give you a job. And he's like, he gives him a job. And then he's like, hey, help me out with this stuff. And it's like, oh my God, I'm helping the Joker with his cool, goofy plans. Because he's a kid. He doesn't know that he's a super villain. And, and slowly like sort of realizes that like, oh no, the Joker is a super villain. I don't want to kill people. I just want to have fun. And it's like, a, it's like looking back at it as a kid, it's like, oh, that's just a fun little episode. But like looking at it now, that's like such a clear like allegory to me for like grooming, which is like props to the writer's room, especially for doing stuff like that. Well, I actually refused to rewatch it for a while because I was worried nostalgia had gotten the best of me. I was worried that the show was too kiddish to rewatch as, a, as, as an adult. But um, rewatching it, Especially seasons one and two, it's it gets really dark. Especially all the stuff with Ethan Bennett and Clayface. The season finale of season one is almost like a, an adaption of the Killing Joke. Um, all it takes is one bad day to make a man go crazy, which is exactly what Joker did to Ethan Bennett. I still remember Joker's first scene, and goddamn, it's terrifying. And it kind of started this infatuation with the Joker that never really left me. Like, even though I didn't like Batman, I was like, oh yeah, Joker's pretty cool. I remember I only watched The Dark Knight because it had the Joker in. And I only started watching Gotham because my friend told me the Joker was going to be in Gotham. You can see where this pattern goes. I watched Suicide Squad because of the Joker. And this deep-rooted love for the Joker, it began with the Batman. I didn't realize as a kid, but... The Joker is never displayed as a total physical threat to Batman. But in the show, they gave him martial arts skills and turned him into an acrobat as, as well, having him jump around all, everywhere. And I've always loved that design of the character. The weird thing was, like, I didn't even watch, like, of, like, how much of my childhood that show was, 
Surprisingly, I only really like watch season three episodes and then other random bits and chunks that I got from like Kids WB. I didn't, I don't think until like a couple years ago in like high school, I didn't, I don't think I like completely binged the full show. And it, it's funny because like season one and season two are the seasons everyone goes back to as like, this is a masterpiece. But like, I barely remember any of that stuff. I, I really only just remember the Batgirl episodes, some of the Robin episodes, and like random episodes here and there in season four. But but yeah, for, it's it's strange that like for such as like a big part of my childhood, it was really only just these two DVDs and a little extra things here and there. Something that as a kid always aggravated me was that they never released a complete series DVD or Blu-ray. Um, so I took the liberty of I found a fan art online of, of a complete series DVD and I printed it out and made my own case and put all the discs in, which I'm quite happy with. It takes up less shelf space. It takes up less shelf space. I had one yellow The Batman action figure and I took it to kindergarten like for like a show and tell day and I lost it like right there. And I looked all around the playground for it and I could never find it. And to this day, it's one of those like memories that sticks with me as like, I need to be more responsible with my stuff or I'm gonna lose everything, so. Also growing up, I bought all the toys, all the Batmobile. There are two different types of Bat Caves that came out. Robin, Batgirl, Batman, Man Bat, Joker, Mr. Freeze, all of them, um, which I still have packed away somewhere. And I'd always be grateful uh, to this show for um you know just helping me like it was my first you know i watched the like spider-man one as a kid but it was mostly just background noise but this is the first time i'd watched like a comic book tv show in mind like thinking about how cool it was and it i've got a big old pile of comics over there in fact my first ever comic that i bought like that was dc or marvel related you know like a super comic was uh, death of the Family Joker edition, you know, the one where it's just like, it just says the Joker Death of the Family, and that was the first DC comic I bought. And I probably wouldn't have done that if I hadn't seen the Batman back in the day. And also just how, how the show reworked characters' origins was fantastic, giving Poison Ivy an alliance with Batgirl before she went evil, and as I said before, Harley Quinn's origin uh, Clue Master, and this total re reinterpretation of Joker that I mentioned before, Hugo Strange. All the characters in this show are fantastic. That's where the show like excelled spectacularly because it know it knows what it was trying to be. It was trying to be a kids show. It was trying to do the things that kids would enjoy, but then also it does the things that like we people watching it as kids can go and revisit and enjoy even more like things like this strange world which i watched as a kid and it was just like the terrifying zombie episode and i watched it like two years ago and it's like a piece of cinema in my opinion the way that it's conducted and the way the plot flows it's like that and that's where i think the show excels the most is like because it knows what it wants to be it wants to be an amazing kids show and i think that's what was perfect for me at the time because that's what I latched on to is I latched on to the fact that it did everything I wanted in like a show in general. I, I didn't have to compromise for anything. That's the kind of stuff I want from Batman. I don't want this ultra dark nighttime edgy shadowy figure. I want a superhero. I want him to be a superhero. I want him to be a beacon. And I think there's a balance to it. And I think the Batman show found that balance, you know, between the overly cartoony and the the ultra dark Frank Miller stuff. You know, I can't stand the Frank Miller stuff. I mean, the Frank Miller stuff is good for the time and they're good stories, but like, that's not the character that I want. That's not the character that I really like. That's not the character I connect with. And I think I've grown to accept that that's not a character I will usually find in Batman stories and that's fine. And so that's why I, I neglect to call myself a Batman fan. But this show did it, you know, it did that tone perfect. It like, it, it found that line and it knew when to cross it, and it knew when to not cross it. Again, it's not, I haven't seen every episode. I don't even remember a lot from the episodes I did watch because it was when I was a kid. But this show is pretty amazing. And I might 
I might actually go out and buy it, like on DVD or Blu-ray. It like highlighted what kids needed, I think, at that time. Or like it highlighted what I needed at that time. And that was a good show that like effectively display these elements of the Batman mythos. So like even for me, like people look at those designs and stuff and say they're out there, but like those like designs for my bread and butter, that Joker design is like kind of in my head, my definitive Joker design. And like th that Cobblepot design, I always imagine him as like a weird stout man who can do aerobatics. But like, I I, I think that's, that's why it's just cause it, it like fit that puzzle piece perfectly for me as a kid. I think that's what I'll always respect about this show, that it made Batman feel like a true superhero with youth and a personal life and if essentially a family when it comes to the Batgirl and, and Dick stuff. But like he felt like a person that was just trying to help as opposed to this, this beefy, giant, overly muscular, perfect, in, in, hyper intelligent genius billionaire who could do everything he felt like a guy he felt like a person that i could relate to to a certain extent obviously not not everything but to a certain extent i could relate to him and i always really liked that and i always felt like that's kind of the direction that the character should have been going for the past 30 40 years um and since he hasn't been that's why i call myself that's why i wouldn't classify myself as a batman fan but the show managed to do that. I mean, seeing what's going on on Twitter and stuff right now, it's like, it, it's kind of amazing to me because like when I made my video, it was just like, yeah, I, I, it's a passion project. I love this show. I just want to put like a thing out there and maybe, you know, who knows if it blows enough, uh, if it gets enough views, maybe the creators will like take a look and like see how much I love the show. And like, that's all that I really had in mind. And then like seeing it blow up, like, it made me happy and like, not just cause like my channel kind of got a little bit more following, but because like it showed me that people still like this show and like peop seeing people on Twitter, seeing Brown Table make those videos on the show. And it, it shows me that like, I'm not like alone in just being that one guy who's like, ah, the, the Batman is like, no, there, th this show did mean like a, a lot to like people, I think who watched it as kids. And so like people that watched it as kids. So I think the show is tragically underappreciated. Um, and I hope that with these videos that are being made by Film Caffeine and, and there's Brown Table just made a video as well, that hopefully there'll be a resurgence in the appreciation of this show. Um, I know the 90s kids, early 90s kids grew up with Tim Burton and Batman the Animated Series, which I love those films and TV show so much but I I have a feeling that for my generation it was the Batman and the Nolan trilogy that really defined our interpretation of Batman and um, hopefully I see that play out in the future and the show managed to make me really like where the character could go you know and yeah it, it, it felt right you know I don't need it to like re like reinvigorate the show completely. I don't need the show on Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever. I I ended with season five in a good way, and the comics also kind of spun off with it, and they did some interesting things, I think. But I don't I don't need this show back because for me it's just that thing that like I see those binoculars and I go, oh yeah, that show, and I like think about like the good times, like as a kid just watching the show and being like. This this was a good show, and it was a it was a good part of my childhood. And it, it just gives me like happy memories, and that's really all I really need from it, <laughs> to be honest. Is just just that, and I'm glad to have that. And I hope sort of like that Twitter thing like sort of keeps going, where it's like, yeah, you know, don't forget the show. It was a good show. It's a very good show. Hopefully that's long enough. Hopefully that's long enough. I don't know. It's not super long, but whatever. I, I don't really know what I'm saying. I'm kind of talking out of my ass, but yeah. Okay.